So it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all for today's Continuing Dental Education Program, which is the third CD of 2022 organized by Indian Dental Association, Akola Branch. We are very fortunate to have our Maharashtra State Idea President, Dr. Tushar Vora, sir, with us. We welcome you, sir. Advances in all aspects of science and discovery continue to occur at an exponential rate, leading to a wealth of new knowledge and technologies that have a potential to transform our routine dental practice. We have now entered the era of evidence-based dentistry, characterized by an increasing social belief around the world that clinical practice should be based on scientific information. Curiosity and innovations has been the foundation stone for the discoveries for thousands of years, and as dentistry progresses with the advancement of technology, it will be affected profoundly. In other words, incorporating the latest technology and being at par with it formulate a new trend. Therefore, it won't be inappropriate to suggest that the coming future will be amazing. Evidence-based research will continue to give us a deep insight into the trends to be inculcated in our practices. As newer trends continue to emerge, we must continue to embrace changes based upon our evidence and research. This gathering provides a vibrant platform for all the dental professionals to share their ideas, explore the exponential or potential of new advances in technology and foster closer ties. So first of all, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed guest speaker, Dr. Prashut Manotra, sir. We are very much delighted to have you, sir. Now I request our president and on, uh, to welcome our guest speaker in a virtual manner and request our president, Dr. Narin Chandarani, sir, to address the gathering and declare the scientific session open. A very good morning to all. I welcome the speaker, Dr. Prachur Malhotra, for the third scientific webinar of ID Akola branch. I also welcome moderator, Dr. Amar Bhuibar. I welcome, I welcome our Maharashtra State President, Dr. Tushar Bora. I welcome Dr. Sarvesh Korea to be the anchor host of today's third webinar of the year 2022. I'm thankful and welcome all the participants without whom the program couldn't have been a reality. Wishing you all a fruitful scientific deliberations. I declare the science leads to success, but now it has changed to smart work that leads to success. We all love challenges. So let's start. Complication when we are in the patient or giving assurance that nothing is going to happen and still it's happening. Considered as a complication. So you can classify this into interoperative complications that include failure of achieving the anesthesia, problems with the tooth that is being extracted, or for extraction of a raw tooth, fracture of the alveolar bone, maxillary sinus poration, nerve injury, laceration, TMJ trauma, or the fracture of the maxillary tuberosity. Whereas most operative complications include injury to the adjacent teeth, hemorrhage, hemosis, post-operative swelling, post-operative pain, dry socket, complication over that. So what happens is, first of all, we are going to take about the failure of local anesthesia. If the anesthesia cannot be secured by conventional techniques of infiltration or regional block, we should not keep on trying and placing and puncturing the patients all over again with loads of local anesthetic solution. What we need to do is go for an intraligament, intraosseous, or intra-pulp injection, provided that the cause of failure is not infection around the local anesthetic tissue. In case you are extracting a tooth that is having infection in that area, it's always advisable to go for a block. Don't go for infiltration in that particular patient because I have already discussed the effect won't come as required. Now, another complication that can happen is root fracture and displacement. That commonly happens when we can have a fracture and a displacement. Always consider the 
possibility of root fracture. It can happen at any tooth, whether it is a situated tooth, normal tooth, but we have to take into consideration well in before the procedure and be prepared that it might break. It shouldn't think that way that it is going to break, but we should always have this back in the mind and tell the patient that it can break. In case you are treating a RCGTated tooth, the tooth becomes non-vital and brittle. It is bound to break. So what should you do? Use the surgical technique of extraction because we very well are aware that the breakage of the tooth is a very high possibility or it is bound to happen. If you are educating your patient well before the pro procedure, he will cooperate with you very well. But in case you don't educate the patient and start with the procedure and breakage happens, that gives a wrong impression on the patient's mind that the doctor is incompetent, whereas you are not. It is because you are treating such a tooth that was bound to have a breakage. Supposedly, if a tooth is having dilacerations, it is bound to break. The patient tooth that is lying below the alveolar crest area and you are trying to extract it, there are high possibilities it will break. If you are treating a tooth that has been RCTated as well as has an improper RCT done and uh, the tooth has fractured over there and you are trying to extract that tooth, the tooth breakage is or root fracture is bound to happen. <clears throat> For the displacement part, do not use a strong apical forces on a broken tooth. So how to manage it? Do a open extraction. Don't wait for a while. Do a openness extraction in that case. If you are getting a uh, patient that needs extraction and is RCTated tooth, you can see it in the radiograph. I will always tell, don't try to extract any tooth without taking proper radiographs. They are a big guide to us and take a proper history also at that same time. Ask the patient, how was the experience with the previous extraction? If he's telling that I was having a difficult extraction previously, that it means that the patient is bound to have some delicerated roots or the root curvatures might be present that are not visible in the radiograph also. Because generally what we do is we take a two-dimensional radiograph, that is a IOPA. Everybody don't have the facility to get a CBCT done and it is practically not possible for us to get a CBCT done even for a procedure like exodontia. We always treat it as a minor procedure. Mind you, any surgical procedure is not a minor or easy procedure. It can become very difficult if we are not following the protocols and we are not sticking on the basics. Any tooth can create a hell for you. If the fragment is non-vital, communicating with the oral cavity, it must be removed. Now, another thing that happens is needle breakage. It can happen to anybody, but the basic reason for this to happen is the person is in the hurry. As we can see in this OPG, I have marked over there the broken needle inside. So what will you do? First of all, don't panic. If you will panic, that will come on your face also and the patient can see the same. Don't panic. Educate the patient. See, this has happened and I am going to solve the problem for you. Why it happens? It happens again. We are in a hurry. Be patient while giving local anesthetic solution. At the same time, make sure you are not inserting the whole of the needle inside. Slight amount of needle should be outside. If we are pushing it inside and the patient is uncooperative and gives a jerk over there, and that point of time, there is no doctor's fault over there or the operating surgeon is not at fault, but the patient has moved vigorously, that might lead to breakage. At the same time, 
don't to try to reuse or autoclave the needles and use them use a fresh needle every time that will protect you from landing in a big trouble okay so cause too much of unrequired force improper insert technique poor quality of armamentarium use sudden undesirable movements by the patient as i have already discussed now the main question arises how to manage it that is what we are discussing about palpate thoroughly if the broken tip is visible if it is not visible don't touch it go for a radiogram but inform the patient well in advance say boss this has happened and i am going to manage it assurance must for yourself as well as as the for the patient you have to first of all convince yourself that you can manage it then only you can manage it if you are not convinced yourself you can't convince the patient also so there will lead to a panicking situation that is not good for you as well as for the patient if you are confident enough give a stab incision at the site and the broken part is retrieved with the help of a small artery forcer it seems to be simple and easy but i tell you it is not that easy if you are still in a doubt don't hesitate a maxillofacial surgeon he will be of help for you problems with the tooth being extracted root fracture and displacement as i have already dis discussed that it happens it is a normal thing that will happen but sometimes tooth is lost in the pharynx you can see over there it is lost into the pharynx what to do you have to go, go ahead with the halminch maneuver what is it in this you are if the person is not is coughing speaking or breathing if it has to be done if the person cannot cough speak or breathe then we have to follow the following instructions stand behind the patient and wrap your arms around his or her waist as you can see in the picture depicting the same then clasp your hands together in a double fist and place the fist thumb inside just below the victim's rib cage and above the navel after you have secured this position you have to give a thrust with a quick and upward thrust repeat the thrust till the object is dislodged it is not so that it can happen while doing the extraction it can happen with the help of an rpd also any situation it might happen but we have to make sure of this if you are alone if alone and choking you can give yourself the abdominal thrust also sometimes you might be in a situation where you get choked up what to do press your abdomen onto a firm object such as the back of the chair and do the sequencing as i have already discussed now another important uh, aspect while doing the extraction or exodontia is we generally read everything in the books but sorry to say we don't follow it we have to always follow the sequence of extraction so what we do is we do according to the chief complaint of the patient ye daant nikalne hain we want that thing to be extracted okay boss i'll go ahead no that is not the way first of all the posterior needs to be extracted before the anteriors for better vision if you are extracting the anterior first and going on the posteriors later you will have vision issues you have to make sure that you are extracting the posteriors first while going for the anteriors then also maxillary tooth before mandibular tooth to avoid fragments coming from maxillary socket into the mandibular teeth so what is we have decided till now first of all we will extract the posteriors in that also the maxillary first than the mandibular i have given the reasons for the same also 
because infiltration of anesthesia has a short, shorter duration than the nerve block. If you are giving infiltration, again, maxillary bone is a porous bone. The effect will come easier or earlier. Again, that comes to be an indication for extraction the maxillary tooth compared with that of a mandibular one. Maxillary tooth are obviously, because of the porosity of the bone, are quite easier to extract as compared to the mandibular tooth. First molar sir, canines are the last teeth to be extracted to have advantages of proper plate expansion of the adjacent tooth. So if we are going for the extraction, supposedly a patient comes to you with uh, who needs extraction of all the tooth, then the sequence will be, first of all, the third molar, then the second molar, then second premolar, then first molar, then first premolar, then lateral, then canine, then the central incisor. You always have to follow this protocol. Sequence, what I have described is coming behind this, but I have already spoken about the sequence. Now the situation. You are posted at a remote place and uh, what would you do if a fracture during extraction has taken place and you don't have time or facilities required to complete the extraction? So in that situation, the first thing is that you panic. Again, I am saying, don't panic. Everything is going to be all right. I know you might have uh, seen that movie, Three Idiots. Follow that. All is well. All is well. Convince yourself first. Don't panic. Remove any exposed pulpal tissue. First of all, that will reduce the amount of pain that might happen to the patient. Cover the fragment with zinc oxide eugenol dressings in which it is wrapped in the cotton and it is incorporated in that side. Never hesitate to refer the patient to a maxillofacial surgeon. Hopefully, you might do a better job and don't understand yourself or keep your ego in that, that I can do it, why should I refer? See, we all want the best for the patient. We should always know our limitations. If you feel like that it is something that needs to be referred, better do it. We should always do good to the patient. We should never harm the patient just for the sake of our ego. Please take my words in a very humble manner. In case you are in doubt, you are not confident enough or the inner thing is saying that it won't be possible for me. Don't hesitate. Refer to a maxillofacial surgeon or call a maxillofacial surgeon for help. All colleagues are a part of the society or the part of our community. We should help each other. And for the maxillofacial surgeons who are listening to my lecture, don't put your ego over there. Your colleague is in trouble, help him out. End of the day, you are not helping your colleague. You are helping the person who is in pain. If you mark these words on both the sides, both the operating surgeon and the consultant, we can make a good team and we can do something good for the patient. That is what all what is this profession is all about. We should keep our egos aside and think for the patient first. Now the root displaced in the sinus. Again, a very disturbing complication, but it can happen. Mostly in the case of buccal roots of the first axillary molars. As you can say, the sinus floor can be visualized over there and the root has got dislodged over there. Okay, so how to manage it? My first sentence is always there, don't panic. All is going to be all right. First of all, do a nose blow test to visualize the root. Placement of a suction tip in the socket may aspirate small root fragments. You might not require anybody for that or if the size of the opening is very large. Take a long piece of iodoform gauze, half inch wide, 
place it in the interim and push it inside and pull it with a single stroke. Sometimes it removes the root by friction or just because it sticks to the gauze. Should be performed only if the opening is large and make sure for this procedure, you are not enlarging the opening, okay? If previous methods are ineffective, radiograph should be taken, mucoperistyl flap should be raised above the socket and a cardwell look approach should be utilized for this. And root can be easily removed, okay? Socket needs to be cleared and closed to avoid creation of a oroenteral fistula. What we have encountered is oroenteral communication. But if it is not properly treated at that particular time, that might lead to a condition that is oroenteral fistula, where the epithelization of the uh, opening might take place. So, cardiac operation, first of all, the incision, then raising of the mucoperistyl flap, entrance to the interim in the canine fossa area, remove the tooth fragment, construction of the nasoenteral window, insertion of the order form gas dressings, and closure. Uh, some people tend to keep these dressings, but my personal view is it is not required if you are doing it immediately there is no need for that just irrigate the sinus in that area and close it this is the picture depicting the window being created in the canine fossa area and take it out the root that has got dislodged into the maxillary antrum make sure that after the extraction of the or the retrieval of the root has taken place, thoroughly wash and clean the sinus from inside. Do a antiseptic irrigation in that area. And believe me, nothing is going to happen. Just close it and relax and go to sleep at home without any anxiety. Everything is going to be all right. Again, <clears throat> another complication that might encounter is Root displaced in the submandibular space. Cause root of the second and the third molar may be pushed through a perforation in the lingual surface of the mandible into the region of the submandibular fossa. Does it happen all the time? No. We can know it well in advance before trying the extraction. That's why the radiograph comes into play. If there is a peripical infection and we can visualize it. Then we have to make sure that we are prepared that the tooth might go or slip into the submandibular fossa area. So that is the importance of radiogram. I keep on telling all my students and all my audience, don't take a single tooth lightly. Take proper radiograph, plan in advance. If you are following the protocols, no complication can happen. But sometimes some complications are unavoidable. That is not because of you. It was bound to happen. Take it that way. Make sure you should be in the condition to say that, that I have followed all the protocols. I have taken all the precautions. Still it has happened. If somebody says that I have been practicing for so long, and I have encountered no complications till date. I'm telling you either he is telling a lie or he is not working. No work, no complication. That is my way of saying it. So how to manage it? The index finger of the left hand is inserted on the lingual aspect of the floor of the mouth. It is going on the lingual side. So you have to take care and put the index finger of your left hand and palpate over there. Mostly, if you are aware that it has gone inside, you just palpate in that area. You will definitely found, find it over 
there. Still, if you are not confident enough, take a radiograph to analyze what is the location. But with palpation itself, you can manage it. Place a pressure pack against the lingual aspect of the mandible and force the root back into the socket. Do it very gently and you will be able to retrieve the root. In this condition also, do explain the patient that this thing has happened. Patient should be well aware what you are doing and why you are doing. If you are, have the faith of the patient, he will cooperate with you. If you don't tell anything and just quietly keep on doing everything, it will give a bad impact on your practice and don't do it. It is not advisable. See, complications can happen with anybody. Accept the complication, educate the complication to the patient, and move ahead. When grasp it with the help of a uh, root tip elevator or a small hemostate, I will always suggest take a small hemostate. If this fails, reflect a soft tissue on the lingual aspect of the mandible, gently dissect the overlying mucoperiosteum and remove the root tip. If you can do this, it is very good enough. But if you are feeling that I might not be the right person to do that. Don't hesitate to call your colleague, a senior, or a consultant to help you out. When the root is retrieved, go for antibiotic prophylaxis and do a regular checkup of that patient. In case the infection has landed in that area, that might lead to a space infection. So the patient should be in constant touch with you. You have to review that patient almost on alternate minimum. I would suggest on daily basis for the first week, but if it is not possible, at least on alternate basis, you should check that patient. Again, if it is going out of control, refer the patient to a maxillofacial surgeon. He will readily help you out. If swallowed or aspirated. In this, for the aspiration part, it has gone below the trachea into the lungs. Major complication. What to do? Transport the patient to the emergency room as soon as possible. Take a chest and abdominal radiographs if the tooth has been aspirated. Consultation with regard of the possibility of removing the tooth with the bronchoscope should be requested. Your ENT surgeons will definitely help you out in that particular way. Okay, they will put a scope over there. Urgent management is to maintain the patient's airway and breathing. If it is so, then you have to first check out whether it is required or not. Check the SpO2 of the patient with the help of a pulse oximeter that now everybody has in his clinic by the grace of COVID. Supplemental oxygen should be given to the patient in case the oxygen level is dropping down. Okay. Don't try to manage this patient in your clinic. Take it to the emergency ward in any nearby hospital with the help of an ANT surgeon or an anesthetist who can retrieve. You should take the help of them. Don't try to manage this patient. If it is swallowed, that happens that you are extracting the tooth and suddenly you move your focus from the oral cavity in the meantime, the patient has swallowed it. It happens. Don't worry, nothing is going to happen. It is in high probability that it would pass through the GI tract within two to four days. Okay, so this is not a worry. But again, do take a radiograph. Make sure it is in the GI tract. For that, you need a radiograph. So we make sure every time take the help of the adjuvants that can help you 
to decide the current situation and your treatment plan. Don't assume anything. It might be there. It might be in the lungs also. And that will be an emergency thing and might be swallowed in the GI tract. Nothing to worry about. For your peace of mind, I will always suggest you go ahead and take the help of the radiographs wherever required. And above all, tell and educate the patient. That is very important. If you can't convince yourself, you can't convince the patient also. Okay? So don't panic. Everything is will, will be all right. Take a radiograph. Follow-up of radiograph is probably not required in case if the patient had swallowed the tooth in the GI tract. Now, another thing. Injuries to the adjacent tooth. You are expected to extract a particular tooth, somehow the other one becomes a victim of your procedure. Why it happens? As you can see over there, if somebody was trying to extract the molar and injured the premolar. Fracture of dislodgement of the adjacent restoration, luxation of the another adjacent tooth, why it happens? See, you can predict everything that is going to happen if you know that, that this is going to happen. So how to decide or how to convince yourself or educate yourself and plan yourself that this is going to happen? Supposedly, you are going to extract a tooth, such as in this case, there are heavy amount of restorations being done in that area. And you are trying to extract the adjacent tooth. And you have taken the radiograph. Sometimes there are tooth colored restorations nowadays you won't be able to appreciate also. Some endodontists do such a good work that you can't make it out with your bare eyes that there is a restoration and you start doing your surgical procedure. Again, stressing out, don't take a single tooth lightly, take a radiograph. After seeing this radiograph, you are well aware there is high amount of restoration in that area. Slightly unawkward or misdirected force will lead to the breakage of the restoration. If you educate the patient well in advance, boss, you have got heavy restorations in that area. I'm going to extract that particular tooth and it might break. You tell me whether I should proceed with the procedure or not. If you have explained this thing well in advance, you can very well do the procedure. And in case of any mishappening also, you won't be responsible or made responsible for a fault that is not because of you. It is because of the condition. It is bound to happen. What we do is we start quickly starting with the procedure without following the protocols. Observe everything. Everything is in, your, in front of your eyes if you notice it. See, our eyes only see what our mind knows. If our mind doesn't know, we won't see it. If you are in a situation, you will definitely know that this is going to happen. You have educated the patient. You are also prepared for all the complications and you will take due precautions for that. Okay? So in case of last uh, large restorations, you have to take care. Patient should be warned. State elevators should be inserted directly into the PDL space, not used to luxate the tooth before the extraction. You have to go in the PDL space area. If you are going in the interdental area and trying to exert it, you are asking for trouble. It will happen. It will definitely break. Or sometimes a crown is over there and you are trying to exert it. Tell the patient well in advance, there is a crown in that area. I am trying to do it with this procedure and this might happen. In case it breaks, you have to get a new crown done. Shall I proceed? Take a consent for that. 
sometimes just the verbal thing is not enough take a written consent proceed with your procedure i tell you you will never be in trouble mentally as well as from the patient point of view also because in private practice sometimes it becomes very difficult to convince the patient that it was not your fault but the only fault was that you didn't inform the patient you have to inform the patient you have to inform the condition patients are sensible enough educated enough they will understand so don't take it that way if i will tell the patient this can happen i will lose the patient i will tell you better lose this patient than doing it you will repent it later mark my words if you are getting a patient who is not understanding that are the clinical facts you are putting in front of him avoid this patient that will give you more peace of mind than the chunk of money that you are going to get with those extraction during elevation a finger should be placed upon the adjacent tooth to support it if you are doing that and you are luxating the tooth you will feel the proprioception in the adjacent tooth if you are feeling that that means your proper the force that you are applying is not proper that is going into the adjacent tooth area and you are luxating the other tooth so if you are putting your finger over there that will give you a brief idea about the direction of the force and thereby omitting the chances of complication that was going to happen now how to manage it we should make sure in case the breakage has happened the restoration should always be removed as soon as possible because there is high chances that the patient might not aspirate the tooth but he might aspirate the restoration we have to take care for that once the surgical procedure has done the injured tooth should be treated with the replacement of the crown or placement of a temporary restoration luxation of the ad adjacent tooth caused due to inappropriate use of extraction instrument as i have described earlier how to prevent it judicious use of force with elevators and forceps other teeth should use not be used as a fulcrum narrow forceps may be used for extraction of tooth that is in the crowded area as we can see the space is very less over there if you are putting a elevator and trying to luxate in that area that generally happens in case of ortho extractions you are bound to luxate the other tooth and you will be at the worth of that orthodontist boss you have luxated my tooth and how could i give the forces or the tractional forces for the treatment so the tip is go for narrow forceps don't try to give an appropriate or a misdirected forces for that particular case management if an adjacent tooth is significantly luxated or partially evolved reposition in the tooth in the so socket and left it alone as you can see in the diagram it has got luxated over there occlusion should be checked to ensure the tooth has not been displaced into the hyperocclusion or traumatic occlusion state if luxated and tooth is mobile tooth should be stabilized with a semi rigid fixation or with the help of splinting in that area simple silk suture might do if there is not a major mobility in that area taking care that you are going over the occlusion area okay but in case you are doing it and the mobility is quite high go with the splints and nowadays the endo people are having those splints that are light cured that are fantastic things to uh, stabilize the tooth over there it is quick and uh, very comfortable to the patient uh, but if that condition is not over there you can go with the figure of eight wiring but the problem with that is that you inadvertently injure the gingiva in that area i want to say that don't be that aggressive if possible go for the acrylic splinting that is slight cured and uh, 
if any of your colleagues is android on this he will definitely help you out with that but if that thing is not available the patient's affordability is not that high you have to go with the wiring in that area then for that purpose don't go for a endodontist call your maxillofacial guy over there now injury to the teeth in the opposing arch it occurs as a result of again uncontrolled force but generally happens because we are in a hurry usually occurs when buccolingual forces inadequately mobilize a tooth excessive traction forces are used or both are done at the same time so they suddenly release from the socket and the force of strikes the teeth on the opposite arch chipping or fracturing the cus i if i'm not wrong it might have happened with many of us nobody will admit it but everybody has done it at some point of time now how to manage it and <clears throat> mostly that happens in the case of the lower molars how to prevent again avoid using excessive traction forces the assistant should hold a finger or suction tip against them to absorb the blow of forces if you are expecting that you are giving high traction forces put a suction in between put a gauze pad in between so in case you are pulling out that particular tooth and an excessive force happens in that area it will hit the gauze piece or the suction tip avoiding direct force going on the tooth on the opposite arch that way you can prevent it if it is already done then management tooth should be smooth and restored as necessary to keep the patient comfortable until a permanent restoration is done if you are a prostho guy you can do it at the same time and this is a crime this is literally a crime extraction of the wrong tooth why it happens again the reason is the same patients are waiting outside you are in a hurry most of the time what you do is give the local anesthetic solution to the patient and ask him to sit outside you are absorbed with some other thing calling the patient without checking you do the extraction i clearly state this is a crime this is a blunder highly unexpected and unacceptable at any point of day you cannot defend it that by mistake i have taken out the wrong tooth this is not a mistake this is a blunder blunder just because of you nobody else is responsible you can try keeping the blame on your assistant something or the other but boss this is a crime boss some dentist is removing tooth for another dentist which tooth needs to be cleaned he says one three otherwise the other person is doing it and extracting it because he has not given the taken the proper history he is not acquainted with the patient his problems his chief complaint this is going to happen this can happen with experience hands also because we have taken the procedure lightly without checking with the patient without checking with the documentation without asking the chief complaint of the patient we just remove the tooth anesthesia has been achieved we are extracting but this is not acceptable it might be because of miscommunication of different tooth numbering techniques there is something else written and you just go ahead and do the procedure somebody has mounted the round uh, wrong radiograph seeing the radiograph without checking with the patient extract the tooth you can definitely do this if any seniors are there they will agree with me this has happened with most of us in case we were not careful in and while pro proceeding with the procedure don't do this 
prevention focus attention on the procedure don't take again i am saying you take exodontia as a very simple procedure take it lightly don't take it it can get much more complicated at sometimes that you will repent later because you have not given proper attention to the procedure check with the patient check with the assistant to ensure that the correct tooth is being removed check and then recheck take the images record the all the records and confirm again that you are going to extract the tooth that needs to be required i just request you supposedly you are going to get a tooth extracted what all precautions you are going to take for yourself you will take check recheck and tell your operating doctor also three times boss yay yay this one is to be removed why can't we do that with our patients if we are taking our patients just as some human being this is bound to happen when you are taking as a patient a point of worship for you this is never going to happen that will never happen with your relatives that will never happen with your acquaintances it happens because we have lost concentration and he is just another patient for us management now things have gone wrong but somehow we have to manage it immediately tooth should be replaced quickly into the tooth socket splinting is done endodontment should be done after the reattachment again fracture of the alveolar bone you are taking out the tooth without taking care high amount of forces being placed over there without palpating the adjacent tooth and taking the tactile sensations give in adherent forces and fracture has happened how to prevent it conduct thorough preoperative clinical and radiographic examination do not use excessive amount of forces over there use open reduction technique to reduce the forces required where you are doubting with the help of radiograph that the fracture might happen how to manage it if bone has been completely removed from, from the tooth socket and with the tooth tooth is not replaced sharp margins should be smoothened soft tissue should be repositioned and sutured a bone remain attached to the periosteum bone is separated from the tooth left attached to the overlying soft tissue and let it heal and tooth is removed bone and soft tissue flaps are again sutured back in anatomical positions what should be the sequence of extraction of the first premolar canine and lateral incisor this is just a question from my side you can ask answer it in the chat is it first premolar canine and lateral incisor lateral incisor canine and first premolar canine first premolar and lateral incisor i want to hear from you all anybody can answer first premolar first premolar canine and lateral incisor yeah okay no sir first of all we are going to remove first premolar then lateral incisor then canine yeah. yeah okay so i had just <laughs> the sequencing we have to follow this way that is first premolar then lateral incisor, lateral incisor and then, then canine. Canine. Yeah. yeah yeah it was just a check out over there <laughs> okay i'll can continue fracture of the maxillary tuberosity that can happen again you can see over there uh, i would like the uh, guest uh, participants to please mute down their uh, mics fracture of the maxillary tuberosity most commonly occurs due to extraction of the maxillary third molar and second molar and in case it is the last tooth in the arch okay it can happen over there 
So how to manage it? If the bone remains attached to the periosteum, should take measures to ensure the survival of the fractured bone. See, what we do is, sometimes we take it out and suture it back. We don't think about if the patient is going for a rehabilitation, maybe 10, 30, 40 years down the line. The suction won't come with the dentures because we have taken out the tuberosity. So we should always take care to preserve the bone or preserve the natural tissue. If the tuberosity is excessively mobile and cannot be dissected from the tooth, option one is splint the tooth for 21 days being extracted to the adjacent tooth or defer the extraction for six to eight weeks, allowing time for the bone to heal. The tooth is then extracted with the open surgical technique, thereby you are preserving the tuberosity. Option two is section the crown of the tooth from the roots, defer the extraction of the roots of the six to eight weeks, allowing time for the tuberosity and root section to heal and remove the tooth roots later on. If the maxillary tuberosity is completely separated from the soft tissue, smooth the sharp edges of the remaining bone, reposition and suture the remaining soft tissue, check for oral intercommunication because there are high chances in that. And your advice is if this occurs, patient should be warned, this could occur in next similar extraction also. There might be dilatation serrations of the roots or the condition might be such that, that he might have this in the next tooth also. And uh, we have to educate the patient in that aspect. If preoperative things are to be taken care of, we have to take a proper radiograph. I'm again and again stressing because sometimes we have to make sure or we have to educate ourselves what is going to happen next. We have to be prepared. How can we get prepared? With a proper diagnosis of that particular procedure. In case maxillary sinus perforation, perforation happens, the predisposing factors is presence of a large interim might be there, reduced bone height might be there, roots of the maxillary molars are divergent and premolars are approaching the interim. In such conditions, we can have a communication. How to do the diagnosis? Diagnosis can be done with a transient illumination test. Affected sinus will be opaque. Or water holding test. You ask the patient to fill his mouth with water and ask him to touch his knees. If the communication is there, the water will start drooling into his nose and he will tell that was there is some water coming inside. That means this way you are doing. And at the same time, if you observe there is alteration in voice resonance, that is an indication that you have perforated the sinus. Or to be more precise, you operated the patient and perforation has ha happened. I would like to take my words that you have done it. You have never done it. You'd never wanted it, but somehow it happened. You can do a butterfly test. Ask the patient from, to blow from the nose. You can check it with the help of a mirror. Put it at the site of the extraction socket and ask the patient to close his now nose and uh, blow his nose there will be fogging of the mirror in that area. Or you can take the help of the radiographs also. But how? Pre-operative radiographs, decision is made to extract the tooth either by closed or open technique. In closed technique, never apply excessive apical force. Leave apical one third of the palatal root of the molars if it is retained unless there is positive indication of extraction. If you are having a condition where the brokerage has taken place and very small amount of tooth is left over there and the tooth was a healthy one. That is not indication to try to take out this small spicule because you are going to do more harm as good to that patient. Or if you are very adamant to remove that, then do it with an open technique. 
what to do after diagnosis of oral intercommunication has been established or a strong suspicion exists management includes first of all we have to diagnose presence of bone on the apex of the root nose blowing test water view radiograph communication if in case communication is small 2 mm of less in diameter don't worry no additional surgery is required put a gauze piece in that area and let the clot be formed take a gel form put it over there do a figure of it suturing ask the patients to follow the antrum protocols not to sneeze while if the sneeze comes keep his mouth open while sneezing don't blow from his nose vigorously don't spit vigorously this will suffice the need advise the patient to take sinus precautions to prevent dislodgement of the blood clot so in that condition there is nothing to worry but we have to educate the patient now management of surgically management can be done with the help of a tongue flap island flap buccal advancement flap piston flap palatal transpositional flap combined buccal and palatal flap buccal fat pad autogenous bone graft but that doesn't come in our domain so we are not going to discuss them in detail and let it be done with the help of a maxillofacial surgeon sinus precautions avoid blowing the nose sneezing violently sucking on straws and smoking if the patient is adamant i can't live it then he should be advised to take small puffs but this is out of the book i will never advise this but somehow in some conditions we have to take certain precautions and we are forced to, to do that because we know the patient is not going to follow our protocols end of the day he is going to blame us so we have to educate see these are the condition that might happen still i will advise you not to do it if you still want to do that you can take it this way to minimize the complications but do tell them the complications are bound to happen if you don't follow the protocols the surgeon must not probe the socket in the sinus with a kindle curate or root pick just to check out whether the perforation has happened or not sometimes the perforation was not there but because of your curettage or checking in that area you have led to a complication if the opening between the mouth and the sinus is moderate size 2 to 6 mm gel form figure of it job is done for you don't worry place some clot promoting substance as same gelatin sponge the figure of it sutures as i have discussed earlier advise the sinus precautions and give medications to avoid the risk of infection so antibiotics need to begin if the sinus opening is larger than 7 mm or larger you have to do the surgical procedures such as buccal as the various flaps i have told you repair with the buccal flap and advise the sinus precautions prescribe medications to risk of maxillary sinusitis antibiotics usually amoxicillin cefaxelin and clindamycin for 5 days along with nasal decongestant it is very important you have to give decongestants to string the nasal mucosa to maintain the ostium patency of the patients call a maxillofacial surgeon instead of trying yourself follow up after Seven days. So it's already twelve. Some of us might be hungry right now, waiting for the lunch to happen. But sorry, boss, I will take a bit longer than required. Please cooperate with me. Now, the mandible fracture happens. See, the somebody has tried to take out this. again i will say it is rare but it's a crime it's a crime if this is happening it's a crime it is no patient's fault it is all and all doctor's fault causes removal of deeply impacted mandibular third molar without checking out the radiographically findings attempting to do it in surgery you should uh, be courageous i will say but don't be outrageous know your limits follow the protocols you are removing the tooth in a severely atrophic mandible application of excess force 
that is needed to remove a tooth. That means you are using a crossbar in that area, not using the elevators properly. So, first of all, I would like to say it should never happen in your life. And if the thing comes to my notice, I will always say it's your fault. It is not patient's fault. You have not taken the precautions and that is not acceptable, not acceptable at all. Because you are trying to do something in a very wrong way. That's why it has happened. It takes a lot of uh, pressure to fracture somebody's mandible. And if you have been able to achieve you, achieve that particular thing, then I can very well say you are Muhammad Ali of dentistry. You have done it. You have achieved it. But that is not a medal. That is a blunder. So anyhow, if it has happened, then we have to manage it also. We have to manage it as if we are going to manage a jaw fracture. It will be very difficult to, for you, my friends, to convince the patient that the jaw has been fractured just because you were trying to extract your tooth. So what I always advise is you take Note down all the possible complications during the uh, exodontia procedure and take a consent for all of them with all the patients, whether you are suspecting it or not. You will be safe medical legally, but ethically, I will not say this was right. Now you have made the patient into this condition already fractured the jaw, given the barrel bandage, because we are not in the position to fix the thing. And igniting the next thing that we can do is gingival and mucosal laceration. You are panicked, trying to do everything yourself and doing that, bruising in that area. Laceration of the mucosa causes mostly difficult and complicated extractions, usually an indication of a faulty technique or selection of the method of extraction. So know your limits. Don't try to do everything yourself. I always tell, practice is a teamwork. Don't try to be jack of all trades. Know your skills, know your competence yourself. You are the best just for yourself. Nobody is going to tell you what to do yourself or what not to do. Everybody has the right to do it. But my friends, know your limitations. If you can do a very good RCT, that doesn't mean that you can do a very good extraction. At the same time, if somebody is a maxillofacial surgeon and he can claim he might do a good RCT, but if he is confident enough that I can do better than an endodontist, my friend, you are at fault. See, everybody has been specialized in a particular bank. I am not saying general dentists cannot do better than that. They can do. Sometimes they can do a better RCT than an endodontist. But the thing I want to convey is know your strengths and know your weaknesses. That will help you out to build a good practice because where in this condition you know where to say no and where to stop if you don't hesitate in taking help of others i am guaranteeing you and my seniors will agree with me you will grow in a faster pace as compared to doing everything yourself just for sake of doing that i want to do it myself that is not the way of life Management. Most injuries heal without complication because of remarkable resistance of the tissue. And if the bones are cleansed properly, we are blessed that we have got a very good blood supply of the face and it will heal uneventfully, though some amount of sensitivity might happen in that area. Injury to the inferior alveolar nerve. Again, you have committed a crime. Why a crime? Because 
you have not taken the radiograph. If you have taken the radiograph and you are seeing that the proximity of the nerve or the chances of the nerve were there and you have not advised the CBCT for the patient, then it is a crime. It is a crime. It is highly unacceptable because anything can have a predictable healing, but you cannot say with that of the nerve. If it heals, it heals. If it doesn't, then the things are going to be very complicated for you. Causes. Uncommon occurrence in the, of the presence of the nerve or extraction of the unerupted mandibular tooth. In judicious heritage, improper use of elevators to remove root pieces results in paresthesia and sometimes synesthesia in half of the lower lip and the chin. That is not acceptable. If you know the anatomy very well, you have checked out the radiograph properly, you have planned it accordingly, it is not going to happen. If it has happened, my friends, it's a crime for me. Highly unacceptable. Management. Most cases, the nerve regenerates within six to six months, six weeks to six months. It does not regenerate. The bony wall of the mandibular canal may have been displaced or impinging on it. This condition sometimes can be remedied by decompression operation. Very difficult to convince the patient though. Traumatic neuroma, excise the nerve and re-anastomatize the nerve with a graft. Again, very difficult for, the con for convincing the patient because he had come for extraction. He's not going to go under GA or any surgeon for the... Uh, correction of the nerve. He will never accept you and he will never forgive you. Don't do it. Corticosteroids can help to reduce the swelling in that area. You can go with the tablet of Nervigen that increase the nerve healing in that area and can be given uh, for one month. But saying it all without clinically uh, going or surgically going, you cannot predict the healing. Even with surgical point of view, I'm saying with open heart, nobody can, nobody can predict the healing of a nerve. So if it has happened just because of your fault, imagine something happening to your family member just because of your folly. How can, will you accept it? I don't think so. Don't do it. Hemorrhage can happen. Cause due to accident, tendal, clearing or cure, cutting of the large artery or pain. Again, trying to do an open uh, extraction, not knowing the anatomy well, giving just the incision in any place. You will have more often in encountered in regions of inflammation where tissues are extens extensively hyperemic management. Arrest the uh, bleeding just with the help of manual pressure if no major artery has been ruptured. It is just because of the infection in that area. It can be controlled by that way. But in case of large vessels involved, you have to clamp it, demonstrate it, and tie with gut. And I tell you, don't try it yourself. My personal advice, call a maxillofacial surgeon and... Uh, he will definitely help you out in that because things can go haywire in a minute with the excessive amount of blood loss and you can very well understand what I mean to say. Sometimes some words needs not to be spoken but to be understood. Subcutaneous, subcutaneous emphysema. Again, I am saying it as a crime. It is a blunder. How it happens? Air is forced into the connective tissue of intramuscular or facial spaces. How? We are using a air holder and piece for doing the extraction procedure or open extraction method without using a straight hand piece under constant irrigation. This will happen. And According to me, this is highly unacceptable and it's a crime, 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 crime. Never do it. 
never ever do it in your life whatever be the situation this is not acceptable this is just happening because of you and it is intentional the audacity of this thing is that it is you are knowingly doing it you are using a air rotor hand piece for doing open reduction my friends this is a crime and nobody can defend you in that because you have done it intentionally don't do this never do this i have explained it why it happens swelling repair and onset plastic consistency you can say will take one to two weeks to heal but still don't do it tmj trauma again it can happen if the jaw is inadequately supported during the extraction of the mandible molars patient may experience pain in tmj dislocation prevention control force use a bite block on the contralateral side to end uh, aid in mandible stabilization and the management is moist heat soft tie painkillers that will suffice the need in case dislocation happens it do happens and that is not because of you the patient has a tmj problem in that area he comes for extraction you have taken iop sometimes it is practically not possible to take your opg you have taken iop and you cannot recognize that this thing might happen still i will say if you have taken a proper history then with the iop also you can take out that history that he has a history of dislocation supposedly dislocation happens over there that in that condition you have to relax the patient ask him not to panic put your thumbs over there at the molar area try to pull the jaw down and backward in the upward direction planning or anticipating the glenoid fossa my friends it can be easily done but don't panic after doing that give a barrel bandage to the patient ask the patient not to open a mouth for a while and when the barrel bandage is removed also ask the patient to take all the precautions for a period of time so that it doesn't happen again the patient needs to be educated it is not because of the extraction it is because of the issues with his or her tm joint refer to a qualified maxillofacial surgeon in that area he will help you out with that post operative complications these are the complications when the patient has gone happily uh, from your operative and uh, pardon me please mute the mic hemorrhage the patient has gone absolutely fine after two days he is coming with bleeding excessive bleeding in that area see hemorrhages can be classified into primary hemorrhage that occurs at the time of surgery and secondary hemorrhage that happens after 2 to 3 days so these are the various reasons damage fracture damage to the nutrient vessels presence of granulation tissue chronic inflammation acute inflammation these all happens because it has it is a primary indication or primary local causes systemic causes disorders related to systemic disease and all platelet disorders coagulation defects structural malformations might lead to this type of conditions patients from drug therapy anticoagulants how to manage those patients pressure pack use a ls solution with vasoconstriction when the patient comes to you do a socket suturing and hemostatic forceps can be of use in case of splints if required thermal measures such as cautery can be used if you can find the active bleeding point in that area firm gauze roll should be placed upon the socket and patient be asked to bite upon it and you can go ahead with the placement of horizontal mattress sutures you can do that that will help the clot formation in that area and control the bleeding check out where there is active infection or not 
postoperatively sometimes the infection might be the uh, cause of secondary hematoma formation or hemorrhage pardon me chymosis and hematoma mild ecchymosis especially in elderly patients with increased capillary fragility and poor soft tissue elasticity extensive ecchymosis and hematoma formation results from improper hemostasis during the surgery see this can happen with the patient patient may turn up with this type of thing i think to worry intermittent eye specs for first 24 hours following which hot moist packs to be used to resolve the this condition and should be advised that discoloration in from bleeding in the tissue and it's not bruise or gangrenous process so the patient will feel comfortable and follow your instruction post operative pain again due to traumatized heart tissue bruising of the bone during instrumentation overheating of the bird during the bone removal that means you are uh, going the bone cutting without use of proper irrigation soft tissue mal handling of the soft tissue rag tissue soft tissues become entangled in the bone improper retraction again this is all because of your carelessness if you are taking all care this is not going to happen post operative swelling it might be edema if the soft tissue are not handled carefully during the extraction the use of blunt instruments i always advise to use proper and good instruments that will reduce the post operative swelling if sutures are tied too tightly post operative swelling is due to edema or hematoma formation in that area and may cause sloughing of the soft tissue and breakdown of the suture line so while taking the sutures you have to take care they, they should approximate the tissue without hampering the blood supply to check it out you can directly check while doing the suturing and placing the knot if you are seeing blanching taking place in the soft tissue area you are sure that you have compromised the blood supply to that area don't do it redo the suturing and make sure they are approximately approximated in the right position the aim is to approximate them not to just tie them like very tightly if you are doing this this won't happen usually both conditions regress if the patient uses hot saline mouth pass frequently for 2 to 3 days this is the swelling that happens infection might be the reason for that you have to give first of all the cause of the infection curative in that area and you can give higher antibiotics if first discharge is there take a culture of that wait give a prophylactic antibiotics in that area and you can manage it when the culture comes get the sensitivity you get the sensitivity with, with what antibiotics the patient is sensitive to and you can do that external hot pause back for 20 minutes per hour warm isotonic uh, isotonic warm saline for that i always tell the patient to take a half a glass of warm water with one teaspoon of salt dissolved in it and rinse the mouth as much as possible and proper use of antibiotics is indicated for that again the condition that happens is dry socket the there is no clot in that area and condition there is loss of blood clot from the socket initially the clot has a gray appearance then it disintegrates leaving gray yellowish bone that is exposed over there diagnosis gently pass a probe in the extraction work bare bone is ex- extremely sensitive suppuration is present in that area and foul odor is prevalent and you can recognize it while wearing your mouth mask also the patient will be having a very foul odor at the same time extreme amount of pain he is having radiating pain in that area the boss the day you have extracted the tooth everything was fine after 3 days it has happened it comes after 3 to 5 days of extraction if untreated may lie uh, go down to 7 to 14 days this is the example where the healing has been taking place there is a hypothesis suggesting that fibrinolytic activity due to organisms like trypanella trypo, tryponema denticola bacteroid meningococcus genius and bacteroid oralis are responsible for that 
but the most accepted one is the balance hypothesis. It explains the uh, dry socket till date. What are the reasons? Trauma and inflammation causes release of stable tissue activator from adjacent bone socket and soft tissues. Tissue activator converts plasminogen present in the blood clot to the plasmin and thereby plasmin causing lysis of the blood and pain by conversion of kinogen to kinin and thus the dislodgement of the clot take place. What are the predisposing factors? First of all, the patient will say, you are responsible for that. Though the other thing is true. It is the patient basically most of the time is responsible for all the complications of dry socket. He is not following your proper instructions. He is not following the instructions that I have given you. You have given post-operatively. If he is a smoker, he will tell a lie that I have not smoked. I have not taken a single puff. Most of the time, the patient will blame you and you have to be strict enough and tell the patient, boss, I have nothing to do with that. It is you who are responsible for this complication. Again, it might be infection, trauma, vasoconstrictor, mandibular extraction. Though I have proponented that most of the time, it is the patient, but sometimes it's the doctor also. There is excessive trauma during the surgery. You have used vasoconstrictors in large amount. The LA was not getting effective. You are keeping on giving the syringes after syringes. And what you have created is ischemia in that area. Blood supply has been restricted for a period of time, thereby leading to this condition. Mandible, again, is a prone area because it is very dense bone and less vascular. So the contamination can also happen because of the fluid lodgement. It is very difficult to food get, getting lodged in the maxilla as compared to mandible. So in that condition, it can be helped. And again, the bacteriologically, the trypanoma denticolum is the most accepted uh, organism that is responsible for that. Smokers, patients on oral contraceptives, and patient doesn't follow the instructions are responsible for this condition. Clinical features, patient usually presents in two to four days. Again, you have to, dull boring pain is there. I have described food debris. If it is present, just clean that area. Lymph nodes will be tender in that area. And this uh, generation of the blood clot can be seen. To avoid this, if you are coming with the patient, the scaling and a gingival inflammation, we have to do one week scaling prior to the extraction. If you are having, seeing that the patient is not having good oral hygiene maintenance before going for the extraction, do a scaling for that patient. You will prevent the condition because what I always follow is an ounce of prevention was worth a pound of cure, but that was before Medicare. This is a car ticket that I have taken out, but it very well uh, justifies the thing that if you are taking precautions, you can make sure that various conditions or complications can be ignored. Antiseptic mouthwash before extraction, minimum amount of local anesthesia, a traumatic tooth removal, and prophylactic use of antibiotics, especially metronidazole. Nerve blocks to be preferred as compared to local infiltration and irrigation of the extraction socket. And day after the surgery, first 24 hours are for cold diet. After that, you should go ahead with the form saline releases in that area. Management, relief pain, socket irrigation with warm saline, that, and all degenerated blood clot should be removed. Sharp bony spurs should be cut over there. Loosened dressing of uh, zinc oxide judinal globe should be put, placed over there analgesic taps and uh, hot saline water baths and bleeding may be induced and patient should be called after three days.